Hello and welcome to Paint You. My name is Tom Hudach, TNT Custom Paint. Today what we're going to be doing is going over the dagger style, scroll style, and lettering brushes, how to use them, how to trim them, and what they're for, basic strokes, loading the paint onto the brushes, holding them, and all of that. Everything you need to do and know to use these. Let's go. So when you order a brush, this is what it would look like. The dagger style brushes, they're all kind of frizzy and wild. The other brushes are chiseled and set in a sugar water, which keeps all the hairs together in shipping. All of these are trimmed. All of these are ready to go. These are cartoon brushes. These are detail brushes. These are lettering brushes, scroll brushes, and the daggers. The daggers are the only one that you have to trim before you start using them. Everything else is ready to go. This is what the dagger looks like. We need to cut those hairs off of the end, just at the end, to get it a nice, sharp, dagger-style tip. As you can see, these are already trimmed and flat and ready to go. So trimming your brush is not that scary. All you need is a flat blade. I like to use something white, piece of paper, that's all this is, on a piece of metal underneath so I can press down on it. And well, the brush itself. But we just want to cut these hairs right on the end. Just these little rogue ones, because those will cause problems later if we don't get rid of them. So, I wet this with a little bit of mineral spirits, just odorless mineral spirits. I'm going to come in, I'm going to hold the brush firmly, I'm going to find just that end where I have that nice chisel, and then the rogue hairs after it, I'm going to go right before it, right here. I'm going to push down, just give it a little bit of a slice and I'm going to pull the brush away. That is all you want right there. I mean, literally it doesn't look like any more than a splinter. And now this brush is ready to go. So after your brush is tuned up, all your other brushes are ready to go. What else do you need? Well, you need paint. These are the three top companies for paint, Alpha Enamel, One Shot, and Ronin. Mineral Spirits cuts all three. That's all you need, really. I don't have one preference over the other. I do like Ronin a lot. Their colors are vibrant. Same with One Shot. And I like Alpha Enamel because, you know, they come out of little bottles like now, that. Now, what do you practice on? I have metal. People use glass. Here's some paper. And I developed these practice sheets, reusable practice sheets. What's cool about these is I got dagger style. I got scroll style, lettering style. You paint on them, wipe them off, paint on them, wipe them off. They're flexible, so you can put them over a helmet, on a hood of a car, something like that, to practice different contours and whatever. But these things are really nice also. One other thing that I do really like about these is it gets your mind away from the design itself and just lets you concentrate on the line quality. That's super important to let your mind rest and just go over and trace these lines out over and over and over. You can get that muscle memory and how all the lines are developed and created. And then you could go in and you can make it. And now that the shameless plug is over, let's get busy after one more. All of these brushes right here I developed. They're all on my website, tntcustompaint.com. You're going to love them. Anyways, we have paint on the palette. I have a practice sheet taped up. Now let's start to palette. One thing that you really have to do when you start palleting is load the brush with paint. You want to load all the hairs because the belly of the brush is the fuel tank for the tip. That drives paint forward, okay? So you really need to make sure that you have enough paint on those hairs. I'm just palleting as I'm palleting. I'm working away from my puddle of paint so I can thin that out just a little bit on the hairs so I don't just have globs. I can control this. See how nice and shaped that is? If I were to overfill it, I would just have this big gut right here just hanging everywhere and flopping all over the place. So now I'm going to run a couple lines, make sure everything's working right, making sure there's no hairs all over the place, and I'm set to go. So a couple things about holding the brush really quick before we start pulling our first lines is one side of a dagger brush has a piece of wood, the other side doesn't. That wood is always to the left. I don't care if you're left-handed or right-handed. That wood is always to the left, okay? Next thing is the way you hold your brush. I hold it between my index finger and my thumb so then I can turn the brush. I need to be able to turn the brush around corners and turns. So that helps me just move this brush between my fingers really easily. 
And the last thing is, how do you hold your brush or how do you hold your hands, I should say. Some people go hand over hand like that. I don't like that. I'm more of a two pinkies kind of guy. Two pinkies and the brush. That's my go-to because I can control the angle of my brush with my wrists and my pinkies. And as I'm turning, I can move my pinkies from one side to the other. That is the best thing that I've come up with for holding and controlling this brush. So 45 really is the angle that you're looking for for most lines that you're going to draw here. 45 to the panel, two thumbs, push down and move everything back. Don't just move your wrists, lock the wrists in at a 45 and move your whole arms all the way to the shoulders, the whole thing. That's what you want. And then when you're making a turn is when you want to stand that brush up a little bit more. So I'm going to start at a 45, get my brush width and then lift up to about a 90. I'm going to twist that brush in my hands and I'm always turning the brush into the curve, right? So if I'm going left, the belly of that brush is going towards that line, always towards that line. So now let's wipe these two lines off and then we will start the design. Here we go. Ready to go. All right. Let's do a little palette here real quick. I'm going to dip the paint off the edge there. And then again, my pinkies, I'm going to start at a 45, push that tip down. And I'm really riding on about a quarter of that brush. I'm really not going more than a quarter right here that where it's chiseled, you got fat, 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 and then it starts to chisel. That little bit right here is really all you're riding on. You're riding on the tip. Work the tip. That is what's going to get you the best consistent results. Okay? So let's do another one right here. I don't want to get in your way. So I want to go down, set my angle, turn, move my whole body into that line. Just like that. Do one more here. Go this way. Down turn the brush into that line. Let's do this one right here. I'm gonna down, hold the angle, and I'm gonna move both my pinkies. I move my whole body back just a little bit. I'm gonna lift up right at the end like that. Come back, set my 45, turn the brush into the turn, and lift up and out. Now I don't wanna make this video too long, so Let's move on to scrolls. We're gonna load the scroll brush up. I'm gonna show you how to get the right consistency for a good turn and a good uh, line. And let's go. So with the scroll brush, you need the paint to be a little thinner than you do with the dagger. It needs to fall down a little bit more like a fountain pen. So as I'm loading this brush up, I'm looking for little bubbles in the paint. I'm gonna go just a little bit more, just a little bit more reducer like that. I'm gonna get it right into this puddle here. I'm gonna bring it all right into this area. I'm gonna pull from my puddle here into this area and see how I'm starting to get bubbles. I want just a couple bubbles in there, small bubbles, not big ones, small ones, just like that. Now I'm getting a good load of paint onto that brush. So unlike the dagger brush, you want this brush more from a 75 to a 90, okay? So let's do a dagger here real quick. I'm gonna go here, push down, and see I'm coming up to a 90. I'm gonna go past 90 and flick. That's gonna give you your dagger strokes or your whatever we wanna call these. I'm missing the word right now, so we'll just call them little dagger strokes. All right, push down, we want that belly in. Push down, belly and flick. Push down, belly and flick. Now you know you're getting the right consistency. Let me do a couple turns here. Working on that right consistency. I could go a little thicker. Let's go a little thicker. Pull from that puddle right back into our reduced section of paint. And let's tackle some of these. Now I know I have you at a funny angle here. 
And uh, you'll see why in a second. You know, I was talking about riding the tip on the dagger brush. Well, it's even more important to ride it on a scroll brush. And I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm going to hold the brush a little bit more vertical, push down. Right after I push down, I come up off of the belly and I want to just go right on that tip. That tip is made to turn. This whole belly and everything is made to turn on itself. So I'm not turning my hands at all. I'm staying stationary and the hairs are turning on themselves, which is super cool. And it makes these circles really stinking easy. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to push down, go away from myself. And all these designs too are made to push and pull around you. All of these different strokes and all these different designs will help you master the scroll style. So see how I'm coming down towards me with that dagger? And I'm going to come back up and take a little bit of the paint off of the brush. I'm going to come back up this way, push down, push away from me and lift, push down, push away from me and lift, just like that. I want to give it a little bit of a flick. Get aggressive with that pull off. It's like that. Let's finish it up too with these ones over here. Then we can move on to lettering. See, I'm pushing down as, as I'm coming back. I want that line to thin out just ride that tip a little bit more and flick just like that line quality looks pretty consistent i'll swipe this off too On the now, width of the lettering is dictated by the size of the brush. There's so many different sizes on quills that you can really get any size from a zero to a mop. Uh, these brushes that I designed for lettering are a two and a five. They're pretty simple, uh, most common sizes. And the two right here, the FY brush, will get me this almost three-eighths line right here so this little brush is going to spread out that wide let me show now, you just like the dagger brush as far as consistency goes i want it more or less right out of the can i'll reduce as i go a little bit but for the most part i'm right out of the can and you can see how wide that little two already goes it's going to go wider than this it's amazing amazing how these uh kazan squirrel hairs just move and spread and hold paint they're they're unbelievable so just going to do a couple basic strokes and this here i'm going to hold one fist under the other and that's going to give me my depth control this way and i'm going to move the whole thing almost like a printer so let me reload a little bit here one hand over the other i'm going to start at about a 70 degree and hold that the whole time so see how i lay that whole belly down and it gives me that one width. That's what these quills are designed to do. They're designed to give you one width. Now you can chisel it out and you can go, you know, thinner and then thicker, thinner and thicker like that. You can do that. You know, these, they are, they are multi-purpose quills here. But for the sake of practice and the sake of consistency, if you push the whole thing down almost to the end of the ferrule, this brush will only spread out so much. So you'll never get a fatter line than the brush can give you. My dog does not care that I'm making a video today, by the way. Lift up, there's your letter. Now also, these brushes are designed to, you have to turn them just like a dagger brush. So I'm going to set my depth. I'm going to turn the brush as I create the letter. Repal it Go this way. And I'm starting in the almost the middle of my last line. So it gives the quill enough time to spread out to continue that connection right there. Go inside here, push, set my width, pull, Go around that turn a little bit right there, like that. And that's done. Now cleaning and storing your brushes are easy. 
Gently squeeze the hair, get most of the paint off the hairs of the brush. Rinse it out real good. Make sure that the paint is out of the ferrules the best you can. Ferrules right up there, right in, the, right in that little, little area there. You want as much paint, if not all of the paint, out of that before you oil it and store it. If there's any paint that dries up there, it can compromise the integrity of the brush. So that looks pretty stinking good. Now let's do the dagger, because this is brand new that I did for this video. So this one is my new golden child. The other ones are all beat up. All right, so I got most of that off. Let's get this one out of here and get a new paper towel. Now, same thing with this brush. You want to get all of the paint out from under that wrap. So take your time. You know, uh, usually I have two cans or two cups of reducer, but we're just doing a video. So I'll be out here later today. So I'm, it's not going to stay oiled for too long. So see already it stained the wood, but it's getting out of those hairs. One more, one more dip. Try to get all that out. And now oil. I use Mac brush oil. I just put it in this little cool bottle with one of my stickers on it just because I thought it was cool. Dip that in. Make sure that all the way up to the ends of the hairs are covered. You can even palette it out a little bit to work that oil all the way up in there. And you can see that I still have a little bit of teal in my hairs. So if I was going to leave this brush sit for a week or whatever, I would get new reducer and give it another bath. But I'm going to be out here again later today, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, same thing. Dip some in, pallet it, pallet it out, and it's amazing how that oil draws the paint back out of the out of the hairs. It's wild. Look at this. Look at all that right there came back out of the hairs. So that's not clean enough if I was going to leave this for days or weeks. So that's done. Like I said, it doesn't take too long to take care of your stuff. These brushes will last a very, very long time if you take care of them. And I put a lot of time into developing these, so I hope that you love them as much as I do and you take care of them like a newborn baby. Look at that. That's, that's a beautiful thing right there. That's fully oiled, fully stored. You put this in your box or somewhere safe and they're ready to when you come back. So I hope that helped you out. I hope it answered a bunch of questions. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, give me a like, and if you wanna see more of this stuff, give me a follow. And again, I have a bunch of supplies and everything to get you started up on my website, tntcustompaint.com. Go check that out, and let me know your questions down in the comment section. Cheers.